not a scientist, but just from observational skills, this is a lot of yogurt. And this is only five days inventory. So as, as you see, Harry, this is an actual tweet. <laughs> so as we tour his offices, Hamdi explains how Chobani got so big so this, fast. This is, somebody tweeted this. Yeah. Somebody has tweeted this. Chobani, your yogurt warms my soul. Yeah. Based largely on word of mouth and social media, his customers marketed the product for him. Go online and you can witness the Chobani love fest. Even cats like it. The communication is so fast, you don't need huge money for the marketing or your voice to be heard. It's a flat world. And if you're good, if you're good, you'll be there. Hamdi believes Chobani is the model for the future. You're a food revolutionary. I hope so, because that's what we want to do. It's shame what's in the supermarkets today. It really is. It doesn't have to have all these preservatives. It doesn't have to have all these bad colors and stuff like that. It doesn't. So whose responsibility is this? It's, it's the manufacturer's responsibility. And they can make it this way. They can make it better, they can make it nutritious, and they can make it accessible. That's what we did in Chobani. Only in America can a 40-year-old Turkish Kurd immigrant making a foreign food do so well that his company can afford to sponsor the Olympic team. Remember the ads? Now our yogurt is powering our U.S. Olympic athletes. Hard to believe, but this bustling plant had been scheduled to be shut down in 2005. Food giant Kraft had given up on making its yogurt here and put the place up for sale. Hamdi, who owned a small feta cheese company nearby, saw the ad and toured the plant the next day. I called my attorney and I said, I just saw a plant and I think I want to buy it. <laughs> he actually laughed at me. He actually used some, some, some bad words and he said, you're really, really crazy. That's not going to happen. Deep in rural New York dairy country, progress was something folks thought happened somewhere else. But here, Hamdi saw an opportunity, and he took it. If I could put in the store, and if they say, hmm, I wonder what this is, and if they can try it, and once they try it, they're hooked, and they, they won't go back, then this is my chance. So what I try to do is make sure that this yogurt was absolutely perfect. Create a yogurt that tasted good and was good for you? The folks in downtown New Berlin, where Chobani is headquartered, had their doubts. <laughs> Betsy and Frank Bio own New York Pizzeria. They are among Hamdi's best friends. Even they wondered. He would tell us all these things, you know, and we would be very supportive. And then he would leave and I'd be like, oh my God, Frank, I'm going to feel so bad when he goes bankrupt because he's going to lose his shirt. You thought he was going to go under. Oh, yeah, 100,000 percent go under. And you're his good friends. Yeah, yeah, I was not even going to charge him for lunch. You know? <laughs> we had a free lunch. I think I helped him out a little bit. But if there is such a thing as a secret ingredient in this saga, it is this man, yogurt master Mustafa Dogan. Armed with a pocket full of spoons, he is, if you will, a taste sensation. Hamdi brought him here from Turkey to work his craft. Is it right? Yeah, it's good. And together, they labored around the clock for two years, even sleeping at the factory to get the recipe exactly right. That place became my home. It was, um, you know, lonely days, difficult days, a lot of question marks, a lot of pressure. As we sat in his hilltop house, fire blazing, Hamdi said it was one of the most nerve-wracking times in his life. But any doubts he had faded when the first cases of Chobani hit store shelves. One major store in New York took our product. And he, he called two weeks later and he said, I don't know what you guys are putting into these cups, but I can't keep it in the shelf. Really? Yeah. And I said, all right, this is good. At that moment, I realized that this wasn't going to be about selling. This was about, can we make it enough? Since then, they have barely kept up with demand. Obsessed, driven, competitive, and a guy so self-aware, he told his most trusted employees to sock him if he ever gets out of line. But Hamdi has something else they don't teach in business school. Passion. The famous uh, poet in Turkey is called Rumi. You know, he said, with passion, pray. With passion, um, make love. With passion, eat and drink and dance and play. Perhaps this, this is, is the model of the new CEO, a man who can quote 800-year-old Persian poetry. 
And while everyone in America apparently is eating Greek yogurt now, until my visit to Chobani, I was the last person who hadn't tried it. So this is your first time ever? Yeah. Oh my God. So he is a perfectionist, a mystic, and one hell of a salesman. What you have is just beautiful yogurt like uh -huh. here. And see, it's, it, won't, it won't move. Oh. It's, it's really thick um, and it's creamy. But, you know, what people do, which I'm really picky about it, is they just keep stirring and stirring and stirring. Right. And that's no good. Oh. Yeah. So what you want to do is just you go upside down, mm -hmm. turn it like this. Ah. See? Beautiful blueberries. Mm -hmm. I get it. <laughs> right? Right? Where's this been all my life? I know, it's been in Turkey and Greece. <laughs> <laughs> now here in upstate New York. It's a 10-acre lake. Most every day, Hamdi Ulakaya goes for a walk in the woods and let the rest of the food business beware. Because like Thoreau, nature inspires him. It's where he gets his best ideas. The normal model is you're in that office 20 hours a day, but you say, I need to walk in the woods. Absolutely. Um, and they don't want me to be there. That's the thing. Says you go do your walk and think, think what you need to think. We got this. And by the time I'm out and I get home and I call my colleagues, he says, "Oh, he just walked in the woods again." <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of ideas that come out of it. Ideas like his new yogurt bar in New York's trendy Soho neighborhood. This is the first time we are having interaction with our consumers. We say, "What do you think? Do you like it?" I learn so much from talking to people every day. He learns from people. He lives his passion. And if you haven't been impressed with any of this so far, on every Chobani package, and it's been there since day one, is a statement of company policy. 10% of profits go to charity. You know, why are you doing what you're doing if you don't have a purpose? You know, money? Yeah. I mean, how much money do you need? There are a lot of rich people who come and go. There are a lot of successful people who come and go. What it, what it counts is what you leave behind and what kind of difference you make. Our thanks to Harry Smith, who hasn't quite been the same since. Up next, after a break, some news that deserved a bit more attention this week, including a revealing look at what flight attendants...